Hello, big news from our friends over at DistroKid. They now have an app. This app works on iOS and Android, of course. And it's available in the Apple Store and Google Play Stores and all the stores where you buy apps. Go check it out. It's got a lot of cool features. You can upload new releases. You can get notified when you've earned royalties. Awesome. You can withdraw from the app via push notifications. A little dangerous for me, but rad. Anyways, go check it out. It's all at distrokid.com slash app. And don't forget, you can still get 30% off your DistroKid account by going to distrokid.com slash VIP slash tour stores. Have a great one. We would like to celebrate our friends and supporters over at isotope.com. Find makers of audio software for repair, mixing, and mastering. You know their goods. RX-10, Neutron 4, Ozone 11, Nectar 4. Chris and I love them. We use them. And we know you'll love them too. And right now, they're having a New Year's sale on many of their software bundles. Go to isotope.com and check it all out. And use code VRUIN10 when you check out to get your discount. Again, it's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. And enjoy. Hello, everyone, and thanks for listening. I'd like to take a second to thank our sponsors, Isotope, makers of software and plugins for audio repair, mixing, and mastering. Here at Ruinous, we use Isotope from top to bottom in all of our podcast production. Check it out at isotope.com. That's I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. And for 10% off their software, enter code FRET10 at checkout. Enjoy the show. Hi, Steve. Joe, how are you? I'm fair. How are you doing? Pretty good. I told you I'm a little um, high and low mixed with uh, coffee and too much, not enough protein issues. You're in Portland, right? Yep. Just down the road from you in Seattle. Is there a Trumpless feeling in Portland yet? Or does it still feel like... Yeah, there was originally, but now I think we're just back to pandemic grind, and there's not much uh, of anything. I mean, we're all indoors. I don't really feel it. Yeah. It was never here. I mean, we had the anti-fascist uprisings that were more magnified and pronounced here. Um, Mm -hmm. That's died down just through, you know, how much can you give? Um, it yeah, it seems like um, that reached a crescendo, and also the winter makes it hard to uh, protest because it's just like everything's soggy. How does how's downtown look? Our downtown is. I was, I'm one of those people now that never goes downtown, and it's like I went down there for some reason, and it's bo- it's boarded up and spray painted yeah. everywhere. Yeah, I mean. Uh, the initial, when the Apple store got um, vandalized, that was sort of like, <laughs> oh, this is serious now. <laughs> um, and uh, that's still boarded up. And yeah, I think it is. I don't go down there much either. I mean, yeah. I think Nordstrom's is open. Um, right. <laughs> uh, these are Bellwethers. Or um, and Pal's bookstore is open again. But, oh yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I mean, I guess we'll have to see what happens when the vaccines get distributed beyond the senior citizens and care workers, and hopefully, um, shop workers and stuff get them first. Maybe teachers. Maybe teachers. Yep. I forgot about that. Why them. aren't teachers on the list? They're not on the list here in Seattle. I think they are. Seattle sucks. I think they are here. Oh, I don't know God, if the teachers necessarily want to be. I think yeah. they like uh, the way it is now. <laughs> right. <laughs> Some of them. Um, yeah. You get used to just having digital office hours. You know, respect to them. Far be it for me to be the type of liberal that likes workers' rights, except when it's teachers. Yeah, you know, I think we've, <laughs> right. I think we've seen some of that. Have you been teaching this year? No, I helped a little bit with basic math with my daughter, but uh, 
No. Um, have you ever given drum lessons online? No, because I'm a terrible teacher. Yeah. Yeah. I think I am too. Um, yeah. I did it once for school as a as a uh, um, whatever you call it when you have the auctions and uh -huh. I don't know if the guy felt like he got his money's worth. Right. Um, you gave a guitar lesson. Yeah, in my house yeah. pre-pandemic. Um, right. First one I ever gave. I think I'm kind, and I totally understand. You know, I think I'm. I can pretty quickly gauge what the level was of the player and what he wanted to get out of it. So I had yeah. that going for me. But it's in terms of process or actually truly improving in technique, etc. I'll leave that to the experts. Yeah. So uh, in the last year. What's your day look like? Do you have any routines? You do the same thing every day. If nothing is picked a, up, anything if nothing is the same thing. Um, yeah, I'm. Yeah, I pretty much am here to aid and abet my children and keep the house in a working order. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. there's hypothetically playing guitar and, and writing music and um, keeping up with doing podcasts and and, uh, <laughs> and maybe some, you know, business talks. But really, I've slowed down to not like a, I've said it before. I feel a little bit like I'm just at an age where I'm borderline retirement age for certain kind of professions. And I find myself feeling like I'm retired, even if I'm not. I don't know if you were if I was younger when this pandemic hit, you know, I would just probably be grinding the same way and whether it was not only music but socially grinding socially, which I think everyone is basically grinding at this point, you know. Um cuz it's yeah. so difficult. But at our age, you know, at my age, you're younger. Uh there's a little bit of like, oh, I'm just gonna Sit in my easy chair and watch some shows. You know, I I hate to say it, but uh, um, <laughs> as it just just doesn't end this thing. It's been the longest year, absolutely sure longest has. year. I can I can't. You know, you would think you would like that because like life is precious and we don't want to just rush through everything as if it's a blur. But then. There's a, there has to be a middle ground, right? Um, yeah. Mm. It's not natch, man. <laughs> so everyone's, you know, a lot of people are saying we are changed forever. And when we get back to normal times, we're going to have some of these habits and behaviors that we adopted in the pandemic. I've said this before. I don't believe it from my non-critically thought out idea of it. I just want to get back to work and eating at restaurants, etc. If we flip the switch and tomorrow, you know, everything was open, you think some people would be like standoffish socially or keep any of these? Yeah what I think are uncool behaviors. I do think so. Um, agoraphobia. You do? Yeah, I think, or, you know, it's going to take some time. I, I see it in my mm -hmm. kids, uh, at least one of them, is uh, really getting used to living, like, a digital life. And uh, right. before, when it wasn't an option, um, she just went to school and, and went out and so I think for a certain kind of person it's gonna alter forever um, you know I really do think so and I'm for people with tendencies like that uh, introverts and maybe some of the people that were kind of formed pre-internet um, like me you know, it'll exacerbate more of the eternally online way of acting, like through texting and staying home and uh, 
I don't know. I can see that. And, and you know, it's uh, in some ways, uh, uh, for better or worse, it could be a preparation for environmental catastrophe and and uh, continued, you know, automation of our existence, more people staying home, more people working at home. You know, people get the feeling, oh, I kind of like this. You know, like, um, I don't really, that commute was annoying driving and, uh, um, or at least they think they do. And certainly a lot of companies are going to be like, oh, that's less overhead. Right. Um, stuff like that. Uh, and it's not to say that if it was that light, the thing was a switch, people would be, it would be like dope guns and fucking in the streets. You know, I think <clears throat> people are going to want to party. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Roaring 20s. Yeah. Did you have touring scheduled in 20 or mm -hmm. 21? Yeah, we had more of 20. I made this album that you might play a song off, and we had that a. Uh, Twice canceled, uh, twice canceled tours. What about you? You're yeah. always touring, though. You're uh, a busy guy. Tons. I'm always touring, so I, I always canceled. Yeah. I went to Los Angeles, and we recorded four sets in a studio. And that was it. That's all we've done. We've done four shows that streamed. But, yeah, all of, all of my touring got canceled. Yeah, that's and... a bummer for musicians. I mean, it shows... Yeah. The uh, really precarious nature of our gig work, you know, because there's no um, benefits and, well, I mean, at least for me, um, you're just on your own without the primary source of what you do. And and I, as it drags on, I mean, we're all feeling it psychologically as well as financially. I mean, we, I feel lucky in a way that I mean, I hate to say that always, like, I feel lucky, you know, because someone else has it worse, and your thing is still bad, but <laughs> it's, uh, <clears throat> like, who's tricking you to say that you feel lucky? Like, I don't really feel that lucky, actually, but... <laughs> yeah, did you, um, speaking of streaming, I, I'm not, I don't get good or bad feelings from streaming, I just not terribly interested in it but have you done any of that it seems like uh traditional techniques you could just sit up there and play your acoustic guitar right yeah i just decided to sit that one out i, I was like uh yeah i've never been like really good at performances in front of cameras to begin with mm -hmm. so that was one reason i have succeeded and then i've had good ones but like the success rate is not always the best like on live tv right. or radio shows and they've always been such a struggle to like get all the gear in there and <laughs> for and for what you know like a little bit i know mm -hmm. people are listening and it's sort of a give back to the radio station that plays you or to the label to show that you're in the game doing everything you can but you know I kind of just preferred late night concert in the dark with the lights and everyone's had some beers and we're all in it together if I have to do that um, so yeah that and like a, like a related other people do it better and I can watch things that people do if they're really savvy with their setup i'm not saying it's bad but for mm -hmm. me it's bad so that's why i don't i think it's pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> well i want to play uh i'm going to make it easy for you i haven't there's someone standing behind you with an acoustic guitar and i want you <laughs> no i'm just joking mm. i'm going to play christian man off the record i don't are you cool with that yeah all right, here we go. You don't need headlights to see. Open your mind back to the love of a Christian man. The wheels do stop. 
to it a lot this morning that's a good tune it's got uh some cool musicians on it and a pretty good singer when did you record it uh about two years ago it feels like um yeah all in a kind of like five days uh live uh live vocals you know whole thing done at once um did you do it there in portland yeah we did it in portland with this guy chris funk uh He's oh, yeah. helped assemble a uh, stand-up bass player and drummer. Brought in uh, guitarist Matt Sweeney from like Super Wolf and Chavez, and Chris played slide. And then we got some also a couple of other session people to overdub after the fact. Um, some other kind of musicians, uh, Afghan American. Uh, two dudes that came for three songs the first two days we jammed with them really um, yeah this uh first song on i mean you can hear it you, you'll hear the songs they're on it's really obvious mm -hmm. sitari and flutes yeah and uh robot this like kind of stringed instrument that's uh kind of kick-ass i um, mean 
that song also has a kind of an Eastern bend to the yeah. notes, right? 12 string guitar. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, folky world music excursions um, on the back of a record I did before that, which was called Groove Denied, which was all digital audio workstation, drum machines, and um, one-man band, Ableton, kind of four-track, digital four-track vibes. So this was like another way to go, and... I thought it was, really came out well. Yeah, I love yeah. it. It's cool. I love that on that song, I like the guitar that's like maybe in the right speaker or something that seems to just be noodling the whole yeah. time. It's kind of fuzzed out. Yeah, that's that's Matt. He's playing uh, some Credence mixed with uh, some desert sounds that he's learning too, like African, uh, I don't know what you call it, West African Tuareg scales that he's starting to learn. If they ever rescore Apocalypse Now, you could pop that song in there. I think it has a good it has a good feeling for a, a vintage movie. Um, <laughs> I agree too. It's kind of sexy or something. And I talked to the um, publishers that I work with, and I was like, "You should do that." And of course, they should. But there's 40 billion other songs. <laughs> the, but you know I don't know there's also 40 billion shows so that's right have you ever even heard of anyone rescoring a movie officially is that a thing um, as far as rescoring I mean people do the uh, jam to the silent mu movie yeah um, as far as rescoring an old movie that's a good idea I mean oh, yeah. they do new versions Speak Daft Punk did Tron Legacy, but that was right a new movie, right? I don't even remember. Um, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, yeah, I guess you could do it. It would have to be some old classic movie, I guess, that was kind of underground because people would uh, maybe be upset. Yeah, if you messed with the doors in Apocalypse Now. Yeah. <laughs> I both did our rock and roll biz in the 90s for the most part. And it's obvious and easy to notice all of that 90s pop culture being back. And it's it's been happening for a few years. It's been creeping up. But now it's just so common, right? Mm -hmm. Dress, True. mostly yeah. music, maybe minus the guitar riffs. But, you know, 90s pop culture is... A lot of our pop culture now and I can't help but wonder that it must have some significance to like 50s pop culture which reoccurs every generation and um, I have my theory on it but I, I wonder what you think about that do you you recognize all of this blue hair and yeah my daughter is a teenager Mm -hmm. You know, she dresses in uh, docks and uh, some ripped uh, hose and the kind of music she likes is generally, when it's not hip-hop, it's uh, 90s, some 80s music, um, but she tends to gravitate towards that, and I definitely know it, and I'm, you know, it's, uh, this pandemic really couldn't have come at a worse time for uh, all the 90s bands that want to go on tour and like cash in on this because um, there's like we're getting two of our best years <laughs> just erased for our reunions um, and stuff so what if all of a sudden <laughs> which I do think it's impossible anyone's going to care about the zeros the knots the same way but what if uh they did. I don't. Yeah, I don't think they'll be the same. I think it's the pre-internet stuff is. It's gonna resonate in a 
more intense way because I right. I think we're sort of flatlined after 2001 where everything's the same, you know, like <laughs> um, right. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, everything is this. That's exactly what I think. I, I but I also think a slightly the opposite where. There's just everything is so diluted because there's so much. It's just like it's like the um you know, when the T V gets black and white and speckly. That's like the information that we're supposed to take in. Yeah. And it's easy to put your your thumb on a decade pre internet. It's very easy. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And uh I mean there is a certain just you know, the sixties were popular in the 80s or whatever you know like there is a little bit of just a certain amount of time passes but with the uh internet and everything being everything always now at least feeling that it's like that i can see that those years the 90s will right now will because it's still a little bit in um it's still in the frame and it touches there's lots there's lots to touch on like some things are just getting too old where they're just uh kitsch or you know songs from 1962 you're just or comedy you're just going to be like that's not funny you know very yeah. few things um you know we're still within the mindset of the irony and the um you know and we're still living in that on the internet with just trolly irony i see it all the time it just looks like the 90s to me instead of yeah. instead of some like woke uh woke internet thing that's supposedly new um so yeah i don't know man a lot of people do really like i mean when i hear people that are into 90s movies or even music, I'm sort of, because I'm older and I grew up at a different time, I'm like, no, you know, like the 70s have the great movies and mm -hmm. the 70s have the great, this has everything, you know, and then it doesn't resonate the same with some of these younger people. You know, it's not like they think it's bad, but it just doesn't glow, you know, often. Yeah. And certain, gen yeah, certain genres of music are just like really rock and rockest rock and roll it's sort of just like this boogie woogie crap that uh these old hippies did or something you know it seems <laughs> yeah. you know they don't there's certain things like the beatles will always be great but you know a lot of sort of hard rock doesn't resonate with my kids and even bands like well she, i mean she doesn't like pearl jam or rage against mm. the machine either but she likes yola tango maybe it's because she's my kid <laughs> yeah. does acdc work for kids not for mine um, i don't think it works yeah. i was trying to play it for mine yeah six-year-old and i mean acdc doesn't work for a lot of people i mean surprisingly uh certain you know friends of mine have had to come out and say you know what i just think <laughs> i have to be honest you know i love led zeppelin you know, uh, but this ACDC is just, it's all a little bit the same, and I just don't, you know, and I'm like, well, Highway to Hell or something, that's the one that I sort of think is it's kind of punk and pop and rock, and you can kind of like it all, you know, I, try, I usually try to play that one, but that's me remembering back to 1977 when they were, how I viewed them as like a punk band too you know which yeah. they weren't i guess but yeah i mean uh, highway to hell is closer to like the attractions or something yeah to me it's you know it's fast they probably have tight pants and skinny white shoes yeah the whole the whole thing yeah like she wouldn't i don't think she i think that would just be like like insert hard rock here um for her yeah. for them right i'm gonna tell a tour story i never tell my own tour stories but i'm gonna tell one real quick cool. bring it on it involves you <laughs> and it involves the tour we were on and um right when we went to europe yeah supporting face the truth that's right 
I think that was 2005, mm -hmm. four, six, somewhere in there. Man. And uh, that tour was fun. Yeah, it was Really fun. fun. I got to play guitar on stage for the first time in my life, but the guitar was turned down when we did the Black Flag cover. <laughs> you didn't get, you just turned like it down. Again. Yeah. I just turned it down. You ha you would hand me your guitar and I would just turn it down and <laughs> pretend I was Greg Ginn. I, I don't know. I guess Mike was playing guitar and Joe was playing drums. I'm not sure how it went. Maybe Mike on drums. Yeah. Well, he's good at... Uh, he can do it he all. He can do punk. Punk, yeah. uh, like, ahead of the beat, all over the beat. Yeah. But anyways, that, that tour was fun and... The last show was in Rome, and uh, I remember after sound check, we were kind of all packing up. I think we were going to the airport the next day. And I know Joe and I went to the bus, packed up, you know, just so we're ready in the morning. And then we went and walked and checked out Rome. And then we came back for dinner, and you came out to the bus, and you're like, the bus has been broken into... <laughs> And all kinds of shit's gone, including some computers. But most importantly, all the fucking show money for the whole tour or, you know, whatever. Some of it. Not our tour all manager of it. had. Not all of it. Yeah. Some of it. Could have been worse. A lot of it. It could have been yeah. worse. There was more somewhere. Yeah. Supposedly. Hopefully deposited or something. But uh, there was a significant amount of money stolen. And I remember... You know, we were all bummed. I barely remember that last show. I, I just felt, yeah. you know, I felt bad for you, but I just I just felt bad. And a week later when I got home, I got an email from, I don't know, your manager or a manager or you, and it said, money's been deposited into your account. And I was like, all, all the money got stolen. And I think we emailed back and forth, and you're like, no, nah, don't worry about it. And... It, it just seemed to me like it came out of your pocket or whatever. And I know we had a discussion. I was like, I, you guys treated me nice enough. I had a good time. I didn't lose any money, I, you know. And it was just pretty, it was so kind of you to just pay me out and not even, you know, it just felt, felt like it was out of your pocket. And I know you paid everyone else too. Um, yeah, man. Stand up, yeah, man. That's, that's good. Uh, I don't know how I pulled that off. I don't think we had insurance. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I think that was just the T-shirt money or something that we lost, to be honest. Well, but it was... You can downplay it, it all you want, I, but I appreciate oh, it. Yeah. I mean, maybe you know, like, Europe tours are never really about the money. Um, they're yeah. supposedly promoting something, and if you are lucky enough to get on um, festivals a serious festival thing or you're like a headliner at said festivals you can make some money but it's usually subs yeah. subsistence wage so i think i probably just scrapped my amount of that that was really traumatic for uh mike clark remember he lo he completely um, lost it. I don't know if you remember. He was just like, I am done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember. Uh, it was lost dark. his computer. It was dark. They were really, yeah. it's really cool inside job. I mean, you almost had to uh, respect the ultimate, <laughs> like, perfection of their grift, you know, like. Yeah, I mean, the, it was perfect timing. Yeah. If If we want to get into the details, yeah. it was I don't know where you were. I think Mike wandered off somewhere. Yeah, and Joe five and I were different it was people just that perfect. have to all be gone. The dr the the driver, driver was, was sleeping in his little like nasty cave <laughs> that you would never go in. You know, like God knows what's in there. Silence of the yeah. Lambs type stuff. And uh, <laughs> yeah, he just was slept through it. It must have taken him like three minutes or two minutes just. They broke yeah. the door. <clears throat> they broke the door. I I think they got into a safe. They rifled through Mike's. Yeah, they did miss bag. some. They missed some money somehow. I remember that. Ranko yeah. said. Um, Good. And it's like, ugh. 
I want to drag, but and I think uh, and to add to that, I think the whole time I had played there before with Black Art Procession, that mm-hmm. venue. I don't know if you guys had played there, but I was just like, I love this place, you guys. This is the best. It's half outdoor. It's half indoor. It's it's going to be yes. such a blast. And it's the end, and it's kind of like looking around beautiful Fuck. Rome. Rome's such a beautiful place. And then that happens. Yeah. Mm, Pavement had a, a time, too, where they we lost uh, a bag of money um, in which mm-hmm. the second guitarist, for some reason, checked... Uh, check the money on a ba- on the airplane, you know, like a, a bag of like $10,000. Oh. And yeah. apparently you just can't do that, you know, like um yeah. I think it was just a domestic flight. I don't even know, but like so I guess no one can resist that. You know, just you can't put a bunch of cash yeah. on a plane on I guess the x-ray they're going to see it and someone's going to take it. Yeah, um, it was really stupid. It was like sort of a who you said, he said, where the money was, you know, and just hmm. up in flames, KLF style burning money. That's right. All right, man. Well, I'm gonna let you go, but I want to ask you one more mm-hmm. question. What are you looking forward to when we get back to normal? Back to normal. What am I looking forward to? Uh. I guess I'm really looking forward to traveling. I mean, I guess I am just a, one of those like consumer pigs that just likes to go other places than Portland. You know, like I really am fed up with here. And I would have never settled here for at least for my kids' upbringing if I thought I was going to be like stuck here. You know, like I would have... Uh, <laughs> I would have just bit the bullet and, like, lived in L.A. or New York or something, you know, if I knew I only had to be one place. I mean, one of the benefits of this place, as you know, is the airport is really chill and nice. And, yeah, it's a little bit farther to go places, but it's sort of peaceful in that airport. And you you drive out, and and, uh, that's 15 minutes away, and you fly to other fun places you know or drive it's it's far for driving but yeah i'm looking forward to you know when i think about most of my best moments in life they're in other places than where i live um for better or worse i don't know what that says about me but you know like i have memories of going to japan or mexico or you know it's like beautiful places and um then come back here and chill it's a chill place. Yeah. It's beautiful. There's like right. good hiking and things are pretty easy. But I think that's really all. I mean, as far as touring itself, you know, that's in the abstract. I mean, I do like to hang with my bros and sisters and go out and like do that, make the tours. But uh, I'm not really thinking about just that. It's um, I don't know. All right, man. Well, thanks for your time. Nice to talk to you. I haven't talked to you in a while. Good to talk to you, too. I'm going to come down there, I bet, in the next year. I'll knock on your door. Take it easy. Thanks. Say hi to Jessica for me. I will. Bye, Bye. Joey.
show me 